Welcome back to the channel, folks. On this video, this is the bike that we used to use before e-biking. This is my dog-powered bike. This attachment is a pretty much a straightforward installation. It's just four, four bolts on your seat post. One thing you want to make sure that your seat clamp saddle is tight. Their pressure is pulling you this way. And if your uh, clamp isn't tight, sometimes your seat will be uh, rotated. Obviously inspect your bike uh, before any riding with the dogs. Um, your brake pads are working, um, but this is a pretty cheap bike. I'm going to need more components soon. But this is the dog attachment that is crucial to this ride, that makes your ride go on a spring and pretty much makes the ride smooth for you and the dogs. It's called a Let's Go Pet Walker. And I think it was about, hey, hey, what's up? It's about 50 bucks. So as the dogs warm up, make sure they get a brisk walk to warm up and um, it becomes a routine to them. Definitely inspect this before a ride. I'm already going to need to drill another hole soon. As you can see that this is almost uh, going to break. But if you have two dogs, I definitely recommend a tripler. I use one for the alpha dog, this would be the lead dog, which is uh, Jacket, and then our girl, Jealous, she would be on the outer side, she would get a longer leash. The third one, I use as an insurance, just in case for whatever reason this breaks, I use, you can, you can uh, hook this up underneath the saddle, just hook that up there, and plug this attachment in. It's upside down, but it doesn't matter. And I always recommend that they would be on the non-drive side. That way, that way the dogs aren't um, away from the drive side and avoiding all injuries altogether. The strongest dog should always have a, a shorter leash. So when he pulls forward, and she has more leeway right here. And this is the setup that works best. That way, um, the only thing that you wanna make sure is that they're never ahead of the bike. So that way you're always the one leading. So we'll do more demo on that. Now they're already ready to go. Go warm up, go warm up guys, go. I don't have your collars yet. Go ahead. So, yeah, yeah, I know, we're getting there. So they're excited to go out. They typically go out at night, but purposes of the video, we're doing this in the daytime. Um, they're set up on a collar as of now, and that kind of limits their strength. As the Huskies, they're a lot stronger if we had a harness on them, but that's okay. I always start out slow, and the uh, collar system just works just fine for me. And obviously there's no couplers that are always one shorter than the other. So what I would do is just tie a knot, or I think I did, I tied two knots to make this shorter and this one longer. And it works out best, definitely, if one is shorter than the other. Give them their collars and they're pretty much ready to go after the warm up. So let's get this ride started. Always make sure that they have, that they have water. So that way, you know, just like human beings, they need their warm ups. They need to get up in the morning and I give them a snack. And that's where they do their number twos over there. So just give them 15 to 20 minutes of warm up, then we'll get them set up. All right, they got their collars on. They're super excited. Now this is a routine that they know. We've done this a million times over. Let's attach them to our line here. Train your dogs, go 
commands like no, stop, and go, and left, right, and straight before you start out. All right, and we're off. So the first few laps that we do, they go about 15 to 20 miles per hour, depending on their energy. The warmer the weather is, the slower they are. These dogs love the cold, and so I usually bike them at night. But as you can see, I'm not pedaling at all. <laughs> so this is what I call my dog-powered bike. And this is what I do prior to e-biking, right? All right. And they, uh, this is why if you stagger the, the uh, one leash is a lot better um, and having one longer than the other. That way they're kind of like even and Steven. Always keep your male alpha dog or whichever dog you have, the, strong, uh, the stronger dog that you have uh, next to you, right? All right. My girl likes to go straight that way, so I have to always say right. We're gonna make a lot of rights today. Always have your, your stronger dog next to you so you can correct him in case he's doing any anything that you don't like him doing. Uh, but he's pre he's been pretty good. He's, he's a really good um, companion here. She's the one that kind of like likes squirrels or see any other dogs. She's very, um, I don't know, she's very uh, distracted easily. But this guy, this guy is an athlete. He just goes to work and he loves this. And uh, we go around this block four to four to eight times, really, depending on how many, um, how much energy they have. And they, uh, I think we calculate about five to ten miles, give or take, um, per ride. But they're getting old, so they're actually going more towards five miles now. These guys are around. Um, 11, 12 years old, but man, this is for them. They love it. And always scout the area. Um, no, make a right. Uh, know where to go. Have an outlet where to go when, if, there's a, if there's a person walking or running their other dogs. So have an insurance plan ready. And um, there's always ways for me to get off the ground if I need to. Their first uh, roundabout is always on the road because they're fast right now we're actually starting to slow down so um, always air to the safe side obviously and just uh, if, if there were people oncoming obviously I would go on the road um, but right now it's pretty uh, clear so the sidewalk you know um, just be mindful of your surroundings and cautious and courteous as well and uh, obviously in corners, slow down. This is where brakes slow. Shh. They kind of know what slow is. All right, and let's roll. If I said stuff like go, obviously he'll go faster, but I'm trying to, you know, have them just leisurely exercise. This is really for them, and it doesn't hurt them at all. Like there's a spring system that is behind us that is um, keeping us safe, keeping my balance. And um, yeah, I definitely recommend this. I've been doing this for over over 13 years now, actually. So she, this is where she kind of slows down because she wants to go straight. Right, guys, right. She loves to pull that way. For whatever reason, uh, her nose tells her to go that way all the time. So she kind of um, struggles a bit. So the other thing you want to watch out for is just listening in to their footsteps. That's how you know when a dog wants to slow down. They kind of drag their feet a little bit. Um, she she has less energy, so she will be the one, first one to say that she's tired. Um, this guy just goes forever. Like, like forever. Like it might not be in the fastest in their fourth lap, but... And this guy will run for days. In his sleep, he, he's running. That's how much um, he loves running. And 
just in general, Huskies, Huskies love running. If you have a working class dogs, uh, if you had a working class dog, you would kind of already know this as a pet owner. Um, they're bred to pull, and I'm just here exercising that 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 benefit that they have. You know, um, not all dogs are bred to pull, obviously, but these guys are, and I don't want to take that away from them. So, this is their activity, honestly. Um, if I need exercise, some people have, you know, some people around here have been saying, oh, you're cheating, you know, but right, making right. Um, yeah, I've heard those remarks, I'm cheating, <laughs> but this is clearly not for me. <laughs> this is for them, right. And um, if, when, if and when I need exercise, I will run, I mean, I will bike them probably three times around, around three to four miles, and then I'll run them. They had, they still have energy for um, after after this bike ride. He loves people more than dogs. When we take him to the dog park, he goes uh, introduce himself to people, not the dogs. So they're kind of slowing down now. They're about up, oh, maybe not. If they see something interesting, exciting, they'll uh, run faster. But I have not pedaled one bit in this whole trip. And we're still going about 10 miles per hour. And if I gave him command to run, he'll do it. But I'm not crushing these guys. And she's now pulling. You can see she's pulling that way. Right. Come on, we're making the right. She likes to direct the, uh, the our, our route sometimes. But sometimes I let her go that way. Um, but not right now. What are the other things? What else am I missing? Yeah. Definitely look out for their body language. If they had stepped on anything that may have um, hurt them, just look out how they're running. Basically, you know, read your dog. Uh, they have a, dogs have a body language and as an owner, you should know that. You should know what, um, how your dog moves. And, and yeah, like this guy is like, I feel like he's only getting younger. Like, literally, I can't believe how he, he moves good. He moves well. I've had older dogs um, that, that are, were on his age that are already showing like arthritis. Um, I do give um, these dogs um, supplements, medicine supplements for um, arthritis. And I do recommend that. And I've, I've, like, a, like I said before, they are like athletes. Don't overstrain it. If you're just starting out, go for like one, two miles and then eventually build yourself up to five miles and just basically read your dog. If they're tired, don't do it. You know, um, these guys are huskies. If you Google how many miles a husky can can run per day, Google will tell you over a hundred. <laughs> and uh, these are obviously domestic pet households, and um, I don't go that far. We're gonna make a right, guys. One more lap. Make a right. We go straight to go home. They kind of already know that. So right now we're just literally, I think, maybe six miles per hour. So it's still, um, it's still fun for them. Last lap for you guys. Seems like you guys are done. They are not used to morning uh, runs, especially um, springtime. Uh, it's actually not too hot right now. It's actually around maybe 70 degrees, but the other thing too, keep in mind, dogs are always 10 degrees hotter than, than you are because of their fur. And just be very mindful of that. You don't, you know, you don't run when it's 95 degrees. So um, treat your dogs the same way. But right now, the weather's not too bad. I absolutely feel for the dogs that I see that People are running on yeah 90 degrees out in summertime. I, I I just don't I can't fathom that. You know I I feel I feel bad for the dogs. Yeah, we're pretty much slow now. 
they're really, they're about gas. They're not used to this morning ride, but um, due to my work schedule, this is probably the only kind of timing that I have now. But if you have a working class dog, this will definitely make them so happy. This is the be one of the best purchases that I have, the system, the attachment for our dogs. And um, right, and there's a car. Up oh, and there's a truck. Left, guys, left. Uh, what, what else can I say? Have have mirrors so that way you ha have um, you know a visual on your rear. Have some kind of a safety bell. That's always uh, a good thing to have in case you need to notify someone of anything ahead of you. All right. Let's give Jealous what she wants. She's wanting to, and she's been pulling this way for forever. So let's see what she likes. She likes, she smells something nice here. And I don't know, something she loves going this to this uh, school for whatever reason, this parking lot. I like this empty parking lot. All right, girl, what do you like here? Go up, go up, uphill. <laughs> Are you gassed? You might be a little bit gassed. Yeah, you're done. You guys are done. We'll, we'll head home soon. Always recommend um, just doing a loop around your your house. That way, you know, in case you get a flat or um, you need some assistance, I'm not too far, so that's why I just do loops. But, you know, if you don't have the area for it, um, just bring extra tools. That's kind of just, you know, logic if you're biking. Definitely have water for them. Um, they're about at their limit now, and we'll, we're heading home. We're not, I'm not far at all. But I go here a lot. I go in this parking lot for um, test riding e-bikes and what have you. So this is why you don't want a longer leash. You want to make sure that your bike is always ahead because you're the leader. Um, that way they know when you're steering, which way direction it helps them go as well. And uh, yeah, this is something I do pretty much twice a week if I can. Uh, they'll do this every day if they can, if I had the availability, but give your dogs a routine exercise. That way um, they don't have so much pent up energy. As a dog owner, I think you kind of know that already. The, the more energy they have, they'll be spending it in um, mischievous, destructive ways around your, your property. And you know, it's all about balance and they love this. This is obviously like a cheap bike, but for the purpose of this, set up it works just fine for us um, I wouldn't necessarily would want to use an expensive bike just so that they can pull me you know I'd be a lot heavier and uh, what have you but this works out just fine all right well folks I hope you found this video helpful and entertaining stay safe and amazing out there check out my group ride and other useful links in the description below this is Julian signing out, and see you guys next time. A tired husky is a good husky. Alright, I will leave you guys to rest. Alright, good work today. Always praise your dogs for uh, behaving. Come here. You did well, boy. You did well. I know. You're done. You, you seem tired. You are done. <laughs>